Okay, thanks. Uh, so this is joint work with uh, Ronen Eldan, also from uh, Weizmann. Uh, so as most of you probably know, uh, the word deep uh, became very, very popular in machine learning over the past few years with the dramatic resurgence of uh, multi-layer uh, neural networks. Um, and kind of the informal argument for why they are so good, at least in terms of their expressiveness, is that they can compactly represent very uh, complex nonlinear predictors. For instance, in the context of vision, you might have a multi-layer network where the first few layers compute relatively simple features, such as edges, and then neurons higher up uh, compute um, higher and higher uh, order features, like detecting uh, faces or uh, things like that. Um, but uh, this is just a, like a hand-waving uh, argument. Can we actually formalize it? Is, is it actually true that depth is needed for uh, deep learning? And in some sense, we already know the answer. And the answer is uh, no. So for about 30 years now, uh, we know that um, basically any uh, continuous function on a bounded domain in RD, uh, we can approximate uh, with just a two-layer network, which is sufficiently large. Uh, the catch, of course, is that uh, uh, to get this, we need to use networks which are exponentially large in the dimension, so not something of a size which would be uh, reasonable in practice. Uh, and one can ask, uh, what happens if we want to look more specifically at networks or functions which can be expressible by networks whose size is reasonably bounded? Uh, before continuing, a quick reminder what's... Uh, what are neural networks? So these are composed of single neurons, which uh, usually given an input x, which is a vector, uh, they compute some uh, linear transformation of this vector and then push it, it, push it through some kind of uh, nonlinearity. It can be a sigmoid, it can be a ReLU, uh, such as the one here, given z output the max of uh, 0 and z. And you uh, stack many of these neurons in uh, layers. So for instance, a depth to a two-layer network can be written mathematically in this way. So it's basically a linear combination of neurons, each with its own uh, weight vector wi and maybe a bias term bi. Um, Depth-free network would look like this. So we have one layer of neurons, then we um, push the, uh, their output through another layer of neurons. Um, so this is the basic mathematical structure. And uh, the, the question we're focusing on here uh, formally is whether there are functions in RD which on one hand can be expressed by a neural network of a reasonable size, polynomial in the dimension, but on the other hand, we cannot even approximate this function by any shallower network, a network with smaller depth, unless uh, you have a huge number of neurons, something exponential in the dimension. Um, so uh, just to set this question apart, um, okay, so these kinds of questions about depth versus width uh, also appears in a lot of uh, other wor uh, works in other contexts, and also you'll see some results later uh, in this session. Uh, so just to emphasize the differences, here we focus on standard plain vanilla neural networks, which do real valued computations and use nonlinear activations. So for example, this is not about Boolean circuits, where there have been a lot of work about uh, uh, depth uh, separation, but the techniques used there really don't carry through to real-valued networks, um, nor things which are not exactly uh, neural networks with nonlinearities, so it's not about networks which compute polynomials or things like that. Uh, also, we focus directly on approximation error, not on some indirect measure, such as the number of linear regions, if it's a the, uh, the network computes some piecewise linear uh, function. Uh, and we focus on separation in terms of uh, dimension, essentially trying to see whether these universal approximation results I talked about earlier are uh, uh, tight. And even if we change the depth just by uh, one, whether we get this kind of separation, okay? Uh, so in a nutshell, this is the main result of the paper. So uh, we don't look at a specific activation function. Basically, it can be any activation which satisfies some uh, mild conditions. It needs to be measurable. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, it needs to increase polynomially. And it needs to be universal, 
uh, in the sense that a, a, with a two-layer network using this activation, I can approximate any Lipschitz function on some bounded interval uh, over the reals. Uh, so this is an assumption satisfied by all uh, activations in the literature I'm familiar with, and it's also necessary because if the activation is, say, just a linear function, which is not universal, then it's impossible to prove any kind of depth separation result. If the activation is identity, what the network computes is just a linear function regardless of its depth. Um, so what the main theorem says is that there exists a function and uh, some distribution in RD which on one hand can be approximated arbitrarily well by a three-layer network of polynomial size, but on the other hand, any two-layer network you cannot approximate at le unless its size is uh, exponential in the dimension. And we measure approximation here in terms of the expected uh, squared loss. Um, a, co a, co a corollary of this, of course, is uh, that, um, you know, so by picking something which approximates G well enough using a three-layer network, we get a function which is exactly expressible by a three-layer network, but you cannot approximate it by any uh, two-layer network. Um, a few other comments about this result. So uh, I'll show you later on what is this function uh, G, but basically it's a reasonably nice function. It's bounded, has bounded support, you can approximate it by a Lipschitz function with respect to the uh, distribution. Um, also, we don't need to tailor the construction for different activation functions. Using the same function, same distribution, it would work for all activations. So, for instance, even if I allow you to tailor the activation in some smart way to this function, still with a two-layer network, you won't be able to approximate it. Um, and finally, for those of you who might be familiar with results on threshold circuits, um, uh, our result has a, a possibly interesting property that I don't need to make any assumptions on the size of the uh, uh, weights of the network. They can be arbitrarily uh, large. Uh, if you don't know what threshold uh, circuits are, forget what I just said. Uh, okay. So the kind of functions that we're going to look at are uh, going to be simply radial functions. So these are functions which can be, uh, which depend just on the norm of the input, and um, you can give some uh, reasonable uh, motivations uh, for this. So, you know, say in the context of vision, if you want to, maybe somewhere in your network, you want to compare two patches and say whether the distance between them is larger than something or whether some patch is similar to some other patch, essentially you need to compute a radial function. Um, so on one hand, radial functions are easy to approximate with uh, depth-free uh, networks. So the basic idea is that with one layer plus a nonlinear activation, you can approximate the univariate function x mapping to x squared, at least in some uh, bounded interval. Uh, and now if I have a d-dimensional input, I just uh, sum this up uh, over all the uh, uh, dimensions so I can compute the squared norm. And now on top of that, I uh, use another layer to uh, compute some univariate function of the squared norm. So that's how I approximate um, uh, radial functions. On the other hand, if I've, I'm forcing myself to use just uh, uh, two layers, intuitively this would be kind of difficult uh, to do. Uh, because uh, a two-layer network is a linear combination of uh, functions which look uh, like this, if I use a sigmoid or a relu, and if I have a radial function which changes in some way in all directions, intuitively it would be hard to capture it in high dimensions using uh, uh, functions of this form. Of course, this is just hand-waving intuition. Uh, to explain a little bit the more formal uh, proof idea, uh, so it goes through Fourier and uh, through a Fourier analysis on RD. So how many people here are familiar with the Fourier transform on RD? Okay, most of you. Uh, so the basic idea is that we uh, look at the, again, expected squared loss between, um, say, a two-layer uh, network represented by function f and the target function g. Um, we can write it, if uh, we have some distribution, um, as uh, the L2 distance between F times phi, uh, phi, where phi is the square root of the density, minus G times phi, 
And then there's this basic result in uh, Fourier analysis that the L2 distance uh, is preserved if we take a Fourier transform. So essentially, we just need to understand what is the structure under a Fourier transform of two and three um, layer networks. And it turns out the two-layer networks actually have a very special structure. So roughly speaking, if I have a n neurons in my network, um, its Fourier transform with respect to this distribution we use is uh, supported on n relatively narrow tubes in Rd. So again, think of D as large, it's in high dimensions. So actually, it's a very, very sparse support. On the other hand, um, um, our three-layer uh, uh, network is such that its Fourier transform is radial and uh, kind of diffuse. It sort of, um, uh, it sort of has a non-zero components in all directions. So to approximate this function in any reasonable way, we need the support of our two-layer network to cover most of the space. But these are narrow tubes in high dimensions, so we will need an exponentially uh, large uh, a number of neurons in order to do that. Um, of course, there are many, many more uh, details. You can um, check them in the uh, papers and learn more than you ever wanted to know about Bessel functions. Uh, at least I learned more than I ever wanted to know about Bessel functions, but that's the basic proof idea. So, uh, to summarize, um, we showed that uh, depth, even if it's increased just by one, uh, can be exponentially more uh, valuable than width. And this is for standard plain vanilla neural networks. Um, and we did it through looking at radial functions, which I think are kind of uh, reasonable and um, are a good t uh, test case. And there are some natural uh, open questions. So first of all, can we get separation not just between two and three layers, but maybe L and L plus one for uh, arbitrary L? Um, we showed the result for a certain carefully constructed radial function um, we suspect that actually a similar result uh, could be shown for most radial functions in a certain sense, uh, but we don't know how to prove it at the moment. And um, of course, trying to identify other kinds of functions which provably require depth. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>